Hey there, my name's Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. In this episode, we are gonna build a Creality Ender 3. This machine has become incredibly popular in a very short amount of time, and for good reason. It is a $230 entry-level printer, but unlike most other printers in that price range, it is producing models, miniatures, and terrain that rival or are better than machines costing thousands of dollars. It's that good. So. We're going to go through the entire build process. I've already built another one for my studio. Um, I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks for getting it aligned perfectly so that you can start printing right away with it. So let's get started. All right, before we begin, I want you to go to the description of this video and download the current uh, Creality instructions for the Ender 3. These are a lot more in depth than the single sheet instructions that come with the printer. And the reason I want you to have this in addition to this video is Creality is making upgrades to this printer throughout the production run. And I don't want to list a certain bolt size that may change from when I've done this video to when you've bought your Ender. So download that link, uh, have print out the more in-depth instructions, and that way you can refer to them as you're do going through this video and assembling your Ender to make sure you're using the, the correct bolts uh, for each of the assemblies. In addition to that link, I have a link for replacement pneumatic couplers uh, available from Amazon for your Bowden tube. These are not essential, but the one thing I really don't like about the Ender is the uh, pneumatic couplers for the Bowden tube they provide are somewhat weak and they do give out over time. I really like these replacements, so if you want to wait and get the replacements from Amazon before you begin, you can do that, or you can change these out at any time later on after your machine is built. Finally, I have links to some upgrades on Thingiverse, such as cable drag chains and stuff. These aren't essential to your printer, but they will make your printer more reliable over the long run. The drag chain cables will reduce stress on your wiring. Uh, there's a fan cover for the electronics box to keep uh, dust and uh, bits of plastic and stuff out of it. These are things you should really look at doing over the next week or two once your printer's up and running. I know you're eager to print dungeon tiles and uh, terrain and miniatures and stuff, but some of these upgrades are really essential to keeping your printer in good working order, so I would take a look at those. All right, now that I've gone through all that, let's begin. Okay, to start with, we're going to look at replacing the pneumatic couplers for your Bowden tube if you have replacements. If you don't have replacements, ignore this step. The replace links for the replacements are in the description. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do is remove the Bowden tube itself from the coupler. The ring at the top of the coupler depresses to release the Bowden tube. Push it down, simply pull your tube out. That's all you have to do. Take the supplied wrench that came with your printer, unscrew the old coupling. You're going to put the new coupling in and then repeat this procedure for the extruder. The extruder will have a similar coupling, but it has a different thread size or thread diameter. So just screw the new one in. Uh, you are going to want this tight, so not don't crank down on it you know, with all your might, but just get, get it a little tight there. You don't want it backing out on its own. Uh, make sure the top plunger works okay. Press that lip down and insert your Bowden tube back in. Now, the Bowden tube must go all the way down and hit the back of the uh, print nozzle. You can't have a gap there, so really make sure that is pushed in all the way or you will have printing problems. Uh, same thing here. This is the extruder assembly. We're going to replace this pneumatic coupling as well. Just use the wrench. Unscrew the old brass coupling and put your new one on. Again, get it down tight, but not super tight. Now, when building your printer, I like to put all of my screws in order of size. It just makes it a little easier when I'm looking for something. To start with, we're going to look at getting your build plate adjusted. Uh, there's going to be four wheels on the bottom to access these. It's going to be much simpler to work on the assembly upside down, but you don't want it resting on the uh, print bed because uh, you could bend that. So I'm just using two filament boxes to rest the side rails on. We're going to put that up and take a look at the eccentric nuts. Now, what's an eccentric nut? Well, an eccentric nut is just the opposite of a concentric nut where everything is centered. An eccentric nut simply spins off the central axis. And in this case, the printer uses eccentric nuts in order to tighten or loosen 
the adjustable wheels on it. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking a hex wrench and making sure the bolt that goes through the center of each wheel is tight. They usually ship these a little loose, so I'm just going down hunkering these down. Uh, make sure those are done. Once you've finished with that, you're going to take a look at the eccentric nuts. They are the ones on the right hand side that have an actual hexagon shaped bolt. Now if you look at this uh, mounting plate, you have a single eccentric nut. That's the one with the hexagon shape. The other two are smooth. Those are non-movable. The ones with the hexagon shape are eccentric nuts that as you spin the nut, put a wrench on the actual hexagon nut, it's going to rotate off center and rotate away from the ex aluminum extrusion rail. So this is how you adjust the tension or the uh, tightness of these wheels. You're going to rotate it and depending on how it was assembled it's going to rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise. I can't tell you which one. But what you want to do is have these tight enough that there's no wobble on the plate but still loose enough that you can barely twist the wheel with your fingers. Not easily. You don't want to be able to free spin those eccentric nut wheels but you don't want it so tight that you cannot grip it firmly with your fingers and not be able to turn it. Otherwise, you're going to get excessive wear and a flat spot on the wheel. So this is going to take a little bit of a just toying around with this. Get it loose, tighten it up, and keep playing back and forth until you get it to that point that you can just barely spin those wheels with your bare fingers. You don't want them so tight you can't turn them. Also at this point, crank your adjustment knobs on the heat bed clockwise until it is the springs are fully compressed then rotate them about one or two turns counterclockwise here we're looking at the solder connections for the heat bed make sure those are nice and well done you don't have a loose wire that broke loose during shipping just one thing to check before we flip this over Um, anytime I refer to anything on this right or left, I'm talking about your right or left facing the printer. Um, next step, we're going to put the aluminum extrusions for the verticals on. In this case, the one on the right, the holes go towards the build plate and the gap between the holes and the ends, the shorter gap goes at the bottom. Same way for the left hand extruder, the holes go towards the bottom. Take a look at the cover plate for your electronics box. Make sure it has not shifted over. Uh, overlapping your extru uh, the aluminum extrusion there, you want it off away from it or it's going to hinder putting that vertical rail on. So if it has shifted, simply loosen the three bolts that hold it on, shift it over. It's got a little play in it and then retighten those bolts. Now what we're going to do is flip this on its side for attaching the vertical rails. But I'm adding a step in here that's not in a lot of the other build videos you see online or the uh, uh, downloadable instructions from Creality. You're going to tighten these bolts but not get them completely tight. I want them like one or two turns off being fully tightened. Uh, and You'll see why in a minute. Go ahead and get both most of the way on. Once that is done, you're going to take one of the remaining aluminum extrusions that go horizontal and you're going to hold it up against it and use it as a way of getting these completely square. Now why are you doing this? Why not just bolt them on? Well these can twist on their vertical axis just slightly. What does that do? Well when you're running the machine the wheels that run along them are going to run and wear unevenly and you're going to wear them out faster. Just adding this little step here is going to keep your printer running uh, much more cleanly. The wheels are going to last longer and you're going to get slightly better prints doing it. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting those nuts just almost tight on the bottom one. Now on the top, I'm going to go ahead, make sure I'm completely holding it tight against it, and tighten these up. Now you don't want to muscle these uh, screws in. You have steel screws going into aluminum threaded holes. If you really bear down on these, you're going to strip those aluminum threads out. So don't do that. You want it tight, but don't put all your weight into it. Now you flip it over and we're going to line up the other one and tighten it. So again, just put that aluminum extrusion in, try to get it tight. If you got somebody to help you that can hold them, that's even better. And I'm just going to go in and tighten those up. Had about a turn left to do on that one. Again, get it just nice and tight, but don't put your full weight into it or you will start stripping those aluminum threads out. So once that's done, flip it over 
I'm going to grab that extrusion again and then just slowly slide it at the top, check it at the top, check at the bottom. Make sure you don't have any twist in those two verticals. Okay, once that is done, we're going to check the widths. These should be the exact same width at the top and the bottom. If they are not, you need to get this resolved now or you are going to have printing issues later. More often than not, every Ender I have ever built, I've had the same problem. Mine are wider at the top than at the bottom. Why is this? Well, this, the slightest little deviation in tightening these screws can kick these things out a lot at the top. So more often than not, it's going to be the one on the left. Why? All I know is all three I've done, it's always been my left hand one. So let's check that. I'm just going to loosen them slightly, half turn, then tighten them up. But I'm going to tighten the screw towards the center a little bit more. Okay, and that's just going to hunker that side down and maybe bring it in the center here. So again, I've got the one on the outside tightened, but the one on the center, I'm going to tighten just maybe not even a quarter of a turn more, maybe an eighth of a turn. Put it back up and let's see if that did it. And I apologize, blocking the view with my arm so much in this. I had this on a new tripod and didn't realize I was getting so far into the shot. There, it's perfect now. So once you do this, this was the hard part. Getting these on uh, and even is one of the toughest things on building this. Next up, before you proceed, I want you to take all of the wheel carriages like this one and test roll them on the extrusion. And you're going to go ahead and dial your eccentric nuts in now. It's going to be much easier than when it's built. So slide it on. You don't want any wobble. You want it tightened that it can drop on its own. If it's too tight and it's not going to slide down from gravity, uh, you need to really back that off. In this case, that is way too tight. It should not sit there. It should be able to slide down on its own from gravity. Again, remember, you want this so tight that there's no wobble, but loose enough that you can spin the wheels with your bare fingers with force. They shouldn't be free spinning. You shouldn't just be able to take a single, single uh, finger and give it a spin, but you should be able to grasp it with two or three fingers and turn with force. If you can free spin it like that, you're good. If you can't turn it with your fingers, you're too tight and you need to back off on that eccentric nut slightly. Now you're going to need this for both of the X rail mounts. There's this one and the one that has the extruder on it. Go ahead and get your eccentric nuts dialed in now. It's going to be so much easier than when this thing is built. So this is your extruder assembly. I'm going ahead and putting that on. I'm going to test it and get the eccentric nut dialed in on that as well. Again, Get it to where you can turn it with force with your fingers, and you're good. Any tighter than that, what's going to happen is these wheels are made of Delrin plastic. They're going to get grooves dug into them by the rails, and when it sits for a while, they're going to develop flat spots wherever they're touching the rail from being over-tightened. What does that mean? Well, if you keep those on and they're damaged like that, they're going to decrease your print quality. You're going to get a lot worse looking prints out of it, and you're going to have to replace them. Well... Most of these can be replaced without disassembling the whole printer, but not always. Next up is the LCD screen. You're going to want to just get this in place with these two bolts. Those are going to be your M5 by 8s. And just screw those in with a hex wrench. We'll worry about wiring it up at a later step. Now, next up is your power supply unit. This is going to take M4 by 20. Uh, screws and here you have a choice of 115 or 230 volts if you're in the United States you want 115 just use a hex wrench and slide that red slider down it should say 115 and match what it says on the left hand side of that yellow sticker so if you're anywhere else check where you uh, what type of voltage you need for where you live if you're in the United States it's going to be 115 so go ahead and tighten that up. Those are M4 by 20 screws. Get those in. Okay, next up is your Z-stop switch. 
uh, these are going to use these little rectangular nuts that go in. Now you want these loose, just turned on enough to the screw that they can't fall off. Okay. Uh, you don't want these tightened down or you're not going to get them to fit. So again, just one or two turns onto the screw just to get them at the very end where they're not falling off. <coughs> now we are going to mount this and you may have to adjust this at the end of the build down. But for right now, it's got this little horizontal tab. Um, here I'm just running a uh, hex wrench along the bottom. You want these parallel so that they fit into the groove on that extruded rail. I'm going to rest the horizontal tab on top of my lower extrusion here that runs along the uh, uh, the table. Just set it there. It's going to sit on top of it with that little extension tab. Tighten those screws. Um, in some cases, on one of my enders, this needed to end up being mounted lower just because of how it was set up at the factory. You just clip the tab off and lower it so it sits down further into that uh, side extrusion. No big deal, but we'll deal with that later. Next up is your Z motor and the coupling for that in the Z rod, the Z screw rod. You're going to want to make sure that this rod can fit in this nice and clean, which means that top uh, screw into the coupler is going to need to be loosened slightly because what that does is that tightens that coupler where you see the split there and that will grab the Z rod. So let's go ahead. I'm going to make sure the bottom is tight that's actually holding on to the Z motor. You want to get uh, your hex wrench and tighten it up really nice and tight. Have the tight top one loose. I'm going to use the cardboard that had the uh, small cutters that came with the printer just to raise that up to where I can get the screws in because it sits a little bit above that extrusion. Put both of the bolts in that hold that. Those are both M4 by 18s. You're going to tighten those up. Next up, we're going to put the uh, Z lead screw in, and that's just going to sit down in that coupler, make sure it gets seated all the way down, and then tighten up that nut. Okay, next up is the x-axis assembly. Uh, you're going to have those parts laying out there. I want you to take a look at the aluminum extrusion. You will have a larger countersunk hole on one side like I showed in that photo. This countersunk hole is designed to fit over uh, bolts that are extruding from the faceplate here. So, if you look at that plate, you have this bolt right here over one of your wheels, and that's just going to sit down into that countersunk hole. So make sure those countersunk holes are facing to the rear here. Now, you're going to take your M4 by 16 bolts, two of them. They're going to sit in here, and you're going to have to use the uh, hole behind it on the plate to put your wrench in to tighten those up. Now, I'm going to add, as soon as you get this done, I'm going to add another step in here. So go ahead and get those two bolts in, get them tight, but we're going to insert a step uh, that's not in your download, downloaded instructions from Creality, or uh, I've not seen this in any build videos so far online. Um, again, this is just something that is going to make your life a little easier and get you better prints uh, if you get this line just dead perfect. Now, if you get these bolts tightened, Odds are your x-axis is going to be fine, but what I've found is there's just enough play with them that it can be off horizontal by a millimeter or two. Is that a lot? No, but it will make a difference. Now, before the next step, these two screws I'm showing you here, tighten them up, not tight, just rotate them to the clockwise until they stop turning. That's it. Then you're going to rotate them counterclockwise and loosen them two full turns. That's essential for getting on this Z screw uh, without a lot of trouble. So you're going to put the assembly up here, get the wheels over the aluminum extrusion, the V slots, and then you're going to feed in the Z screw into that brass coupling that you see there. You loosen the screws on both sides of it. So you're going to turn the Z coupler counterclockwise looking down on it and lower this extrusion. Now, 
why am I having you do this before you finish this? Well, you're going to take the spool holder mount that comes with the printer, and we're going to use this as a spacer. So raise this up. Have this resting on the horizontal aluminum extrusion of the base. Check one side, and then put it on the other. And you're going to see if your horizontal extrusion for the x-axis is perfectly uh, horizontal or not. If it's too high or too low on that right-hand side, you're going to need to take it out, loosen those screws a half turn, and readjust it. Keep doing this and checking against that spacer until you get it right. That's essential. Next step, once that's done, is just feeding your uh, X-Drive belt around the uh, pulley on the extrusion side. Once you get it fed through there, you're going to slide on the actual print head assembly. This is the hot end. And you're going to slide this on the rail. You're going to need to adjust the eccentric nut just like you've adjusted the others. Get it to where you can turn it with your bare hand or with your bare fingers just barely. Uh, I've already done that here, so that's on. Now, when dealing with this, do not set the nozzle down resting on your table. If you can help it, you don't want to damage it. So, once this is on here, eh, I think I'm going to go ahead and adjust this a tad more. Um, thought I had it right, but... Eh, is there... Yeah, get those. Again, getting these just perfect while you're building here is going to eliminate a lot of problems later on. Uh, why wouldn't you want to adjust them more later on? Well, they're under more stress then. It's going to be harder to get them dialed in perfectly. Doing it now when none of the parts are under any stress is going to be much easier. Now, you're going to put this belt one end through the, v the little slot here on the bottom of the uh, hot end assembly. You're going to feed it through along the bottom of the V-rail, or the top of the V-rail, swing it around, and attach it on the other end. It's going to be a lot easier to do this way than what they show in the instructions, or the build videos that I've seen. Um, okay, once you got this done, again, watch out for the nozzle. Don't set it down really hard on anything. It's just brass. It can damage easily. Next up, we're going to put the other carriage on. Again, You've got the countersunk hole for the one bolt here, so make sure those line up. Use your screws to get those in. And again, that's just an M4 by 16 screw. You're going to put two of them in that assembly and get that nice and tight. Get those good and tight. You don't want that shifting during the print process. That will cause you problems. So those are screws you do want to get pretty tight in there. Now, next up, we are going to put your pulley in. This is uh, the tensioner assembly. Uh, it has a free-spinning pulley on one end. Again, check these two nuts on the end, the rectangular ones. Make sure they are completely out at the ends of the screws, just on, turned on enough that they aren't falling off. Make sure they are parallel with each other there, or as close to it as possible, so that they do actually fit into the slot. Next, you're going to put the uh, uh, pulley inside of the rubber belt. Make sure the teeth are between the two uh, little uh, side flares on it that keep it in place. You don't want the belt riding up on those sides or else it's not going to fit right. So once you got that in, get those nuts in your aluminum extrusion. Then I'm using my left hand thumb to push outward on that pulley assembly, on the tensioner, while I tighten this. You want to keep that belt tight. Now, if you don't get it right, you can easily adjust this later. That's what it's made for. Uh, but just doing it now saves you that step later. So again, Push outward on it with your left hand, or if you're right-handed, have it flipped, um, and get those screws nice and tight. These you can tighten down good and tight because it's a metal or it's a steel screw, screw going into a steel nut. You're not going to strip it out, and I mean unless you're using uh, uh, a drill to put it in, but you're doing this all by hand, so it's not a problem. Just slide it. Uh, make sure it hits the X stop switch there on the end, right next to that Q QR code. Uh, can trip that easily. Okay. Next up, 
we're going to put the whole assembly on the vertical rails and you're going to turn it completely up and down one cycle on the Z screw using that coupler. It's easier to grip that than the actual screw. Once you've done that, I want you to tighten those two bolts on either side of that brass assembly. But again, you're not going to over tighten them. Just get them to where they stop turning no further. Okay. Once you've done that, back them off one turn only and test run it up and down a complete length. Make sure you don't have any binding. If you have binding, loosen them another turn. But ideally, they should only be loosened one turn from where they want to stop. Next up, put your top aluminum extrusion on. Just use the four uh, bolts on that. Those are going to be M5 by 25s. Uh, your filament holder, just screw the end nuts on. Put one on one end, you're going to fit it through uh, the bracket for the other, and then screw the other one on. Just hand tighten those, they don't need to be cranked down real tough or anything. Next up, you're going to use your M5 by 8 screws and the uh, T nuts. Again, just rotate the T nuts on one or two turns so they're completely at the end of the screws that gives you plenty of room to get them inserted into the slot at the top you want to have this mounted pretty far over to your left because that's where the extruder is and going to be pulling filament off the roll so get don't have it centered have it over to the left hand side like I'm showing here Okay, now we're going to take a look at finishing your Ender 3 up. We're going to hook all the wiring connections in. This is the wiring connector for the power supply unit. Put the two yellow connectors together and pay careful attention that it is wired correctly. Never heard of one being wrong, but it's always possible that a connector has been put on backwards. When connected, red should be opposite red, black should be opposite black. If it is reversed and red is opposite black, stop and return your unit. That is a danger. All of the other connectors just use these white end connectors. They have a small yellow tag that tell them where they go. X, Y, and Z for X, Y, and Z motors, and E for extruder. First thing you're going to do is let's insert the other end of the Bowden tube into the extruder assembly. I'm just going to use a wrench to press in on that blue collar there. If you have the stock color, it'll be, or stock uh, fitting, it'll be a different color, but mine is the replacement, so I got blue on it. Use your wrench to depress the ring and push the Bowden tube in as far as it will go. Get it nice and tight. Okay, once that's done, you're going to start connecting all of your wiring connectors. Here is the extruder connector marked E. Next up is going to be the X end stop switch. Right there, it's in that little recessed area. Then the X motor underneath the motor. Next up is the Y motor on the back the Y end stop switch on the side of the extrusion, the Z motor, and the Z end stop switch there on the side. Finally is the LCD board. Use the connector closest to the build bed. I believe that's designated number three. Uh, finally, you're going to plug it in. All right, I want you to take a look at the zip ties holding your Bowden tube and cable, uh, the nylon sheaths for your wiring coming out of the print head. In my case, they've got these way too tight, and that's not good uh, for your wiring. You don't want it uh, squeezing those like that. So I'm going to clip those off. When you clip these, do not clip on the side of the black nylon sheath. Clip it on the side of the white Bowden tube. Why? Well, if you slip and nick the Bowden tube, it's not going to affect the printer at all. The function of the Bowden tube is on the inside of it. You do not want to slip and clip the uh, wiring in that black harness. So just put some new zip ties on. Uh, you want to have this zipped to the Bowden cable or the Bowden tube simply to add some support to the wiring harness to give it some stress relief. Um, you don't want these super tight. You want them to free spin, but not be so loose that the wiring harness can come away from the Bowden tube. So again, you're just going to play with it. Get it to where you can free spin it and then just cinch it up one a notch or two at a time until it's looking like it's going to uh, possibly bind up with the next uh, notch or two. And then you stop there, 
clip the excess off do this again for a couple other places and it will be perfect now wiring uh, management is essential on a 3d printer as the printer moves the wiring moves as it moves you can break the little wires inside some of them are pretty thin gauge uh, I strongly urge you to download on Thingiverse, it's linked in the description of this video, a drag chain that you just print out on your new printer and add it over the wiring harnesses. It'll make them a little bit stiffer, a little bit, uh, it'll take the stress off of them from movement, moving and distribute that stress over the length of the cable and keep you from having to do some repairs like replacing wiring uh, for fans and stuff later on. So get those drag chains, print them out and add them to your cables. Finally, let's see if this thing works. I'm going to go to the prepare screen, click on auto home. And if it does this, it's going to move along the X axis, hit the X end stop switch. The bed will hit the Y end stop switch. Then the whole thing will move down and hit the Z end stop switch. If it does this, you have successfully built your printer. Now I have the bed leveling as a separate video because a lot of people already have their enders built and just want that so be sure to check that video out for getting it up and printing thank you very much for checking this out